Security is one of the most important things in any video game. Without anti-cheats and other programs, games would be even more overrun with hackers and exploiters than they are right now. And on Roblox, the need for anti-cheat and security measures outweighs pretty much everything else. To the point where the company recently purchased another company that was solely dedicated to anti-cheat measures for $11.6 million. But if Roblox just acquired an anti-cheat program in 2023, what about the last 17 years of the site's lifespan? Has it just been a complete mess? How has Roblox evolved to tackle the ever-growing issue of more and more hackers joining the website? And how did those early measurements of trying to protect Roblox from those hackers destroy basically every old game on the site? Well, let's find out. The way Roblox works is quite interesting from a computer science standpoint. Roblox works using two different sides to every single game. The client side, which is the side that you see, and the server side, which is the side that everyone sees. Think of it this way. Anytime you open a menu, the menu only opens for you. Why? That's because it's a client side operation that was performed in a local script. However, when you get shot in Phantom Forces and die, everyone sees that and it affects the game world. That's because being shot and shooting other players in Phantom Forces is a server side operation. Way back in the day before Roblox was even really a thing, people would just launch Cheat Engine and give themselves infinite money in whatever game they were playing, but Roblox developed this client server side system to prevent this exact thing from happening. However, the hackers were smart and developed several different tools to use to break nearly every game on Roblox. One of these was called script injection. Script injection used to be an extremely powerful method for cheating in Roblox, and to a degree, it still is in some cases. Essentially what would happen is that someone would create a script in Roblox Studio that could do a variety of things. Anything from making every weapon a one-shot kill to some absolutely chaotic stuff. Plus, since this was usually a server script and not a local script, the entire server would be completely destroyed. Ruben Sim goes into way more detail about some of this stuff when it comes to injecting scripts, but it got absolutely ridiculous at one point. So, what did Roblox do? Well, they had to somehow disconnect the client from the server just enough to the point where the client couldn't mess with stuff in the server. You dig? This is the birth of something called filtering enable, a boolean value that was either true or false. This prevented everyone on the client side from injecting scripts into the server side. So problem solved right? Well, yeah, it was for a while, because soon people realized that even with filtering enabled, enabled, you could still give someone hacking abilities. There were free models that had scripts in them that would allow for hacking to occur, and these are what's called backdoors. And backdoors are still extremely common on Roblox today. Most developers of large games are more conscious of these backdoors and don't use any free models at all, but to newer devs who do use free models, they're definitely still a problem. So clearly, filtering enabled didn't really fix any of the issues that Roblox had with hackers and exploiters. There were less hackers, but there were still hackers out there who had arguably more power than before with the help of the backdoors. But wait, the title of this video says that filtering enabled destroyed old Roblox. How did that happen? Well, one thing that filtering enabled did that was kind of just swept under the rug was it forced people to change many of their local scripts, those being the scripts that only affect the client side of the game. The biggest and most notable change was that people had to now use remote events and remote functions in local scripts. Not using these or leaving local scripts unchanged from before filtering enabled was released would completely break the script and in most cases completely break the game. So any game that was made before filtering enable was released and whose developer didn't graciously update the local scripts within the game would completely die because it was basically unplayable. And I can say that for certain, after filtering enabled came out, some of the player counts for these once immensely popular front page games dropped from several thousand to zero overnight, despite people still really loving them, myself included. So we ended up losing the original Mad Murderer, Mad Paintball, and Mad Games to this filtering enabled update. None of them can crack 10 players at a time, and that's really a shame. It's very obvious that games like Murder Mystery 2 are still immensely popular because of their trading scene. And if Lawlorus could, he could have just added a trading system to TMM, but he had other projects to work on. But it's not just Mad Studio that was hit by this insanity. Every single class Roblox game 
was just completely flattened by filtering enabled. It was like a nuclear bomb went off and just obliterated old Roblox games. There are actually a couple of people in my Discord server who want the Exploring Old Roblox series to come back, but it literally can't. Novitus, the program that I use to access the old 2006 client, is pretty much broken at this point, and I don't really know how to get my hands on a different version. And thanks to filtering enabled, trying to play these old games on modern day Roblox is basically impossible because none of the scripts work anymore. Like, take here where the world is quiet, for example. You know, the famous place that gave players the Void Star back in 2007. I can't actually play that game. I even tried to on stream with a bunch of other viewers, but because of filtering enabled, and probably just because the game is so freaking old, none of the scripts work, so we were really just walking around an empty place for 20 minutes. So, is filtering enabled the worst update Roblox has ever put out? Well, that's honestly up to you. Like, if you don't care about old Roblox at all, then this whole video is essentially pointless for you. But knowing my audience, I would say they value old Roblox more than the average person. What's really important is, does this beat the removal of tickets? Yeah, definitely by a long shot. Well, that's pretty much all I have for this video, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.